reworking my landing gear. Well, I did not like how the cables and everything else was run to raise and lower the landing gear, so I changed it. <laughs> Hope you like this update. Thanks for watching. Oh, welcome back to the hangar. Where have I been? Well, I've been everywhere but here at the hangar, but I'm back! Um, no excuses other than, well, an excuse. Uh, work. <laughs> work has been taking me um, out of town an awful heck of a lot, and so I haven't had a lot of time to come here to the hangar. But I'm here today to give you an update. Now, I was thinking, am I going to video what I'm doing like I've done in the past, show you drilling holes and cutting stuff and whatnot? There, no, you know what? This is going to be more of the video update of what I've done today. So, what have I done today? Uh, and today is, uh, well, it's, it's um, um, Easter weekend, so go figure. When you're watching this, it'll probably be Easter Sunday, because I'll edit this and put it up there. So, what have I been doing? Well, um, one thing that's been annoying me an awful lot on this airplane is how the landing gear retracts. Uh, the original way that it was done was really kind of thrown together. A lot of frayed cabling, a lot of cabling messed all over the place. It just wasn't, I want to say, um, it just didn't look like it was reliable. I guess it was because, you know, I, I imagine other people did it this way, but I, I thought there's got to be a better way. And I thought about it and I figured, okay, I'm going to do it this way. Then I thought some more. No, I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to do it this way. Then I thought some more. And you know how that is. Uh, anybody who's worked on an experimental aircraft knows that 90% of your time is spent going, what am I going to do with that? Or how am I going to... So, yeah, you'll know what I mean. If you're ever looking at getting an experimental aircraft or building your own, you're going to be doing a lot of thinking, at least you should, rather than just barreling ahead and doing something and going, oh crap. So don't do that. Think a lot. So what, which is what I've done. I thought, okay, how am I going to fix this issue? Well, I figured out a way. Come with me. Let me show you. Oh, I haven't done this in a long time, so I'm going to do it one more time uh, today. Because uh, I see a lot of people are subscribing, so down there, down there, on the, on the, on the other side, there's a subscribe button. Click it. It doesn't cost you anything. Nothing at all. And, yeah, yeah they, oh, people say ring the bell, so yeah, hit the bell as well. But hit the like button. Hit the like. Like and subscribe if you haven't. Um, I'd really appreciate it. I want to hit a thousand subscribers, you know, this summer, so we'll see. Okay onto the show and tell of what I did to address the issue of raising and lowering the landing gear. Okay, so I'm going to put the camera in front of me, so I'm going to be behind it. Now, the cables, uh, this kind of looks messy because I've got a extension cable going into battery charger just to keep, it's a battery maintainer. So if you remember way, way back, I fixed the issue here, let's walk around this way. This issue here, where th this cable fell out, and it, it does that on a lot of these. So what this is, is of course a, a fuel line, gas line, and a clamp. And this is heat shrink tubing that has glue inside of it. And this is just a standard cable that raises and lowers the landing gear. So by putting this tube over here, clamping it, gluing this down, this sheath will never pop out and flop sideways. And it's got a nice curve to it, so it's smooth, it's not, not binding. So that was done a long time ago. I addressed that, but one of the things that I didn't address was what this cable does. And this cable raises and lowers this landing gear. It's okay over here. It's what's inside there that really I don't like or didn't like. I wanted to set it up so that I could pull the cable and, well, I don't know. I guess I should have recorded a before and after. I have this seat lifted up here. This is what you can do if you put a, you just lift that up. So, let's look here. I'll move these Morris cables out of the way. 
and that's the brake line. There it is. Oh, you notice there's three of them there. Left landing gear, right landing gear, nose gear. Yes. I took the nose gear cable and I put a new one on and I extended this and I made this plastic, well it's actually nylon block that the cables fit into. Big hole, small hole at the other side coming out. And then I made this little block here. The three cables come in. This one has a little nub on it, of course, because that's how it came. And it goes to the nose gear over there. And these two are the original cables from the uh, main landing gear. I still have to put clamps on here one, and, and, and fix this in permanently. And then this cable comes out here. And there's another one here. got to snip these tie wraps. I just put it through this metal just so it holds it in place. Now it's completely away from any of the control cables. Originally, these would touch the control cables and, and they would interfere. I didn't like that. So, this little block, oh, and I had to uh, make this, or fashion this aluminum plate here, which is, sorry, bad camera work, it's riveted onto this little tube over here, and on the other side, I just bent it in a break and fed it in there, bolt this to this aluminum plate here, which holds it secure. And then this is the cable that I'm going to be pulling on. It goes into here, and let's go on the other side. I hope this is making sense for you guys watching it. I guess I'll, you know, when I'm editing it, it'll, it, I'll see whether it makes sense. Let's go down here. Here's the cable that I'm going to be pulling on. It's going into that black block up here, plugged into this, which was one of the existing blocks for the landing gear, and then I made this little guide block here with an Adele clamp, which I can move forward and back to adjust it, and I have yet to put the handle on here. So I'm, I, I need to make sure that I have enough pull, and there's supposed to be a little hook over here, so I got to put that hook back here. So when you grab the handle and you pull back, um, you know, this this cable will be um, like that, kind of, you know. You pull it back, hook it on there, and then relock the main landing gear. It'll pull the nose gear up. Now, of course, the nose gear, I replace the cable, so I have to put a, a loop on here and crimp it and that kind of stuff and attach it back on here so I can raise and lower the nose gear. And that's about it. Oh, the cable I used, well, it's got a little bit of corrosion here, but the cable I used had um, this threaded end on it, so I just tapped this out and, and threaded it in there so it's secure, it'll never come out. And that's about it. The only thing that's left to do is to address the water rudder. Let me see, can you see that cable right here? This is the cable that raises and lowers the water rudder. Again, I don't like it. I don't like how it was set up. Um, so, I'm probably going to extend this somehow. Not sure how, but I'll figure it out. And um, so that I can raise and lower the water rudder. Let's walk around this side of the airplane. Actually, I'll put the seat down so you can see a better idea of what it will look like. Oh, by the way, these Morse cables, they, will, they uh, attach here, and when this uh, seat is down, they will be accessible from here. The handles will just stick out over here, away from the control cables, and I have to yank them forward. They only go forward about four inches, and then I'll grab that handle that's going to be attached here, pull it back, clip it on, lock the landing gear again, and done. Water rudder, I would like to have the handle for the water rudder right here to pull it back for flight, and then lean it forward out of flight. Anyways, God, I hope this makes sense. Um, that's that's what I've been doing today, was, was working on all this. Here, let me just lift the seat back up again so you can see one more time. So there's that uh, block that I made, those two blocks. One's a pole block, 
where you know it'll when you pull on the cable. Actually, it's not fastened anywhere. So if I pull on if I pull on this cable here. Oh, sorry, front and camera work. If there were a handle on here and I pulled on it, what would happen is it would do that. Now, of course, I've got to put the lock nuts on here so that it actually starts retracting the main gear, which it can't do right now because they're locked in place and it's sitting on the main gear. But I think you get the picture. It's, it's, um, that's what is supposed to happen once this gets all finished. That back in there. There you go. So that will move forward about six inches and then back. And um, there we go. That is what I've been doing all day. Six hours. A lot of drilling, cutting, sanding, and fabricating and whatnot. And um, what that will mean is that I will have a handle to pull the landing gear. Sorry. I will have a handle to pull the landing gear up with which will be between my legs to off to the left side and uh, none of the cables now can possibly get entangled with any of the control cables or control rods that kind of stuff whereas previously the way it was done these things were loose and kind of hanging around the place and um, and you can see where it was rubbing on the control cables and so on and for the most part I don't think anything bad would have happened that's like a 99.9% chance that nothing bad will happen, but that 0.1%, that'll bite you in the backside real fast. So nowadays a 100% guarantee that the landing gear cables and control whatever, and the control cables and control everything else never touch, can't interfere with, with each other, they're secure and out of the way. So that's what I've been doing today on my Challenger and I had to get that done so I can get the nose cone put on and finish the pedostatic lines. And once the nose cone is on, which is sitting right there, once that nose cone is on, then I get to put the windshield on and finish the windshield modification. I bought the third door option where the windshield folds out on the, on the right side it makes more room to get in and out of the aircraft. I can't finish that until I get the nose cone on. I can't get, you know, I can't get the nose cone on because I got this work to do with the landing gear cabling, which you can't do once the nose cone is on because there's no access. So yes, yeah, that's what's happening. So um, before the end of today, I will have it 99.9% .9 done. Uh, I'm gonna have to put this airplane up on stilts, uh, up on jacks to free up the landing gear and then I'll have to raise and lower the landing gear and measure exactly how how much in how many inches I need and the final spacing for those little blocks at the front let me show you what I'm talking about okay right here this block here whether I have to move it back or forward because what I want is when when landing gear is down, this cable is in all the way. I want that pull handle that I'm going to be putting on here. I don't want it flopping all over the place. I want it mostly tight up against here to hold it in place, hold it secure. Okay, so I might have to, uh, uh, but it has to be such that when I pull it back and hook it on here, the landing gear is fully retracted and I can lock the uh, landing gear in with those Morse cables. So that measurement has to be done. I've got to raise landing gear and fasten that handle on in such a way that it hooks on here and holds them in the right place. And then when I let go, it moves forward. And then I don't want it to flop down. That means that this will have to move back or forward in order so that when it moves forward, the handle uh, sits close to this block and stays in, a, in an accessible area. The previous builder just used tie straps and, and routed it through tie straps and I didn't like that so I just went in with that block. So that's that's what has to be determined is the exact final position of this based on where I, ha how, where I have to put the handle on on this cable in order to retract the gear and hook it on which the hook isn't on here right now. And uh, I'll show you the handle, follow me. Uh, this was what ca it came with the uh, the Challenger. This is this thing basically a piece of plastic, 
Um, but it seems to work. You know, you, you grab a hold of it. It's strong. You just yank it, and there goes your, you pull up your, uh, your landing gear. And then you hook it in place. And I imagine that's why this other hole, and you, you pull it back, and you drop it in the hook, holds the landing gear up, and you log it in place. So this cable here that's attached is going to have to be cut off. I'm not going to use it. You know, well, maybe not. I don't know. I'll see. Maybe, maybe I'll splice it onto that cable. Uh, whatever. Still things to decide, but um, it needs to be finished before I can go to the next step, which is um, putting that nose cone on and finishing the pitot-static lines. And once that nose cone is on and the windshield is on, it's taxi test time. I'm going to do that without the doors being finished. I'm going to do some taxi testing because the weather's getting warm and it's getting very close to me doing my check ride for my pilot's license. And um, then I'm going to do some taxi tests. Ain't going to fly this thing. Sorry, not right away. Uh, there's going to be some transition training with a, uh, a few guys here that have the same aircraft with the same engine on the same floats. Go figure. Very popular combination. And they've agreed to take me up and uh, give me a few hours and a few dozen touch and goes and full stop landings and all that kind of stuff. Work the circuit uh, with it just to get the feel of the aircraft. Because apparently the Challengers are a very rudder dominant aircraft, whereas what I've been flying mostly is the Piper Cherokee and the Piper Warrior, and maintaining a coordinated turn is very easy on those things. You barely use the rudder at all, just a touch to keep the ball centered. Whereas apparently on the Challenger, you got a lot of rudder. Apparently, that's what I've heard. So I got to find that out. And I don't want to find it out on my own. I'd like somebody else who has flown these things and put a, you know, 100 or 200 or 1,000 hours or whatever else on a Challenger to, uh, to take me up there and say, yep, you got too much rudder, not enough rudder, you can feel that. And yeah, once I get the feel of it on their aircraft and uh, I take them up for uh, steak and beer a few dozen times uh, as a thank you, then, um, then I can hop into mine and confidently say that, yes, even though it may perform slightly differently than their aircraft, um, it won't be such a dramatic jump that uh, I would experience by going from a Piper PA-28-140, which is what I'm doing right now, probably my check ride in that, uh, into a Challenger 2 with a two-stroke engine. So, yeah, worlds apart, but it's got to get done. Then I'll be filming the first flight with this aircraft, which will be later on this summer. So stick around. You know, uh, these updates aren't coming as fast as they used to, uh, only because, like I say, my work has been busy, and it still is. I can only do this kind of work on weekends, and uh, uh, in this case, a long weekend. And I will keep up with it, and when I do get any, any work done, I will film either the work or what I have done, like I have today. So it's almost uh, 18 minutes by the clock there of, uh, of a video, which is long enough for me to bring you up to date as what's happening. So from... Here in the hangar, and my Challenger, thank you very much for following along. Thank you very much for, uh, for watching through to the end. I appreciate that. Uh, if you leave a comment, sit and just put through to the end. And people go, wow, why are they saying through to the end? If they watch through to the end of the video, they'll know that. And then I'll know that, hey, you watch it right through to the end. So, uh, which I greatly appreciate. Again, that like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff, whatever. Um, if you could do that, that would be appreciated. So, um, Winnipeg Jets, come on boys, it's still hockey season, so remember, guys, keep your stick on the ice. We'll see you again here in the hangar. Bye for now. Let me know in the comments uh, whether you like this type of an update where it's just me explaining what I've done or whether you'd like to see me drill holes, sand, and swear a lot. <laughs> Thanks for watching. See you again. Bye-bye.